The beautiful thing about living in a post-Brexit world is that the same media corruption that put paid liars onto our screens day in, day out, which enabled Brexit to happen, still exists. And so people like Tom Harwood keep coming on our TVs to tell the same lies, even though we can all see with our own eyes the reality of what they've done, which makes my job delightful. For example, after even Rishi Sunak pointed out the unbelievable benefits of being in the EU single market. Nice. Yeah, he's overselling it. Overselling it? Okay, let's flip the damage of Brexit around. Can you really oversell getting 20% more businesses exporting to the EU? Can you oversell a 6% drop in food prices? Can you oversell undoing the damage of COVID twice over? And the reason why Brexit offers opportunities, many of which have not yet been realised. But why haven't they been realised? Surely if there was any time that our economy could have really done with all the amazing benefits of Brexit, it would be the last three years. Because as a matter of basic political survival, it's in the Tories' interest to make the best of Brexit, so why haven't they? After seven years, you can't keep pretending that this amazing future is just around the corner while we're slowly bleeding out. Because we have thousands upon thousands of EU laws still in our statute books. So name one. Please, point to the laws that if we got rid of them would undo the roughly £100 billion of damage that Brexit has done to our economy, according to our government's official experts, the Institute for Fiscal Studies, and the Bank of England. We have not yet pursued the regulatory divergence that is the prize of Brexit. But the reality right now is that the regulatory divergence is the cost of Brexit, because it's because we have different laws of the EU now, that there's so much red tape when we're trying to trade across borders. And it is precisely those non-tariff trade barriers that the government's official experts say is damaging our economy. Being able to do things differently. Even an audience member pointed out that he is deliberately vague when he talks about the benefits of Brexit, but it's worse than that. Because when he talks about doing things differently, he means things like Liz Truss's mini budget, which he says was exactly what we needed to do after the 2016 referendum. You know, the mini budget that crashed the pound to the lowest level since 1985. I can't stress this enough. The Brexiteers have had their shot and they fucked it. And we've got an opportunity to do things differently, more dynamically, with our life sciences sector, for example. Again, being deliberately vague, but he's probably talking about the EU's rules against gene editing. But in recent years, the EU has made major steps forward in that, and they managed to do that without crashing their economies. So his propaganda is out of date. We've got so many growth opportunities by becoming this sort of regulatory sandbox. There's a reason why I wear t-shirts when I do this stuff. It's because I don't like the idea that how posh you look Look and sound to determine whether your words have value in politics. Because I've got suits, I can say things like growth opportunities and regulatory sandbox. But those fancy words and sharp suits don't mean anything, especially when the reality is that real people's lives have been ruined by this. Like the Fishers who are on track to lose 300 million pounds by 2026, and the young musicians who can no longer tour. Now the problem is, if you're in the EU single market, you can't make those rules. But we did though. We did make those rules together with the other countries that we do most of our trade with in order to make that trade cheaper and improve standards of living. And now, as you've just implied, even the Tory government is scared to go too far away from those rules because they know it would damage trade. It was people like you who told us to give up our seats at the table in deciding the rules of our trading environment. You can't cut your own VAT on so many issues. Again, he's using out-of-date propaganda because EU countries can now drop VAT on sanitary products. You can't sign your own independent trade deals around the world. According to the government's own figures, the benefits that we've had from signing trade deals around the world since Brexit is 178 times less than the damage of Brexit itself. You can't levy your own tariffs. Yeah, I wouldn't be bragging too much about that given that we've given a low tariff deal to Australia, which the farming community says is an absolute disaster for the UK. So you can't it's sanction your own Russian oligarchs. Yeah, here's France drawing up its own list of oligarchs to sanction, and here they are seizing Russian boats. And that was in February last year. Yes, it was part of EU policy, but that's because EU countries tried to show a united front against Russia. Because strength through solidarity is kind of the whole point. Whether it's our vaccine rollout- The vaccine rollout thing again, play the clip. We have been able to authorise the supply of this vaccine using provisions under European law. And here's Slovakia and Hungary, two EU countries buying Russian vaccines that the EU hadn't even approved. Well, it would be wrong to try and look at our economic situation right now and say, this is all to do with a vote that happened in 2016. This is what we call a straw man argument, where you pretend that your opponent is saying something else and then you beat them on that argument. Like pretending that the people who oppose Brexit don't know that COVID and Russia exist and think that all the economic problems in the UK are down to Brexit. Whereas the reality is that Brexit simply chopped off our legs while we were already down. The fact that we almost had a Marxist become our Chancellor of the Exchequer, that scares off business investment. Now I'm no fan of Corbyn because of how he handled Brexit, but to pretend that fear of his policies, which never reached Downing Street, is the reason for our economic problems when you actually supported the policies of Liz Truss while she was in Downing Street and that 
did crash the economy is wild. Because the energy subsidy that the United Kingdom government has done to respond to these energy crises is illegal in the European Union under their state aid rules. France capped energy price rises at 4%. Germany spent 65 billion euros. What are you talking about? Now we can discuss the technicalities of EU state aid rules, but to pretend that the UK wouldn't have been able to help people with their energy bills if we'd still been in the EU, when EU countries are helping people more? You okay, Tommy? The question we've got to ask is, why is it that these journalists from these well-funded organizations like the IEA and GB News are consistently invited onto the biggest news platforms in the country, even though it's been proven that they weren't just wrong, but historically disastrously wrong?